to bring. Well, Simon Heffer, historian, journalist and author, is acquainted with the court around the King and the Queen Consort. And I wonder, Simon, can you give our audience some pointers, some direction as to the sort of person that the Queen Consort is? Well, she's very straightforward and very sensible and very lacking in pomposity and grandeur. And I think since the two of them got married 17 years ago, she's had the most magnificent effect on the king. Uh, I think the king's self-confidence was really shattered after the public assault on him after the death of his first wife. Uh, an assault led, I think, very wrongly by elements of the tabloid press who were just determined to kick him, I think, for circulation reasons, to be honest with you. And uh, Mrs. Parker Bowles, as she then was, was um, also a soft target because they'd had uh, a relationship before he became divorced from his first wife. And um, again, there were elements in society who wanted to paint her as some sort of scarlet woman. But uh, she soon showed, after she married him and started to take part in his official duties, that she had a natural ability to behave like a royal in, in the way that uh, we had come to expect of the Queen and of other members of the Queen's family. And she was very good at putting people at their ease. She was, I say, a very straightforward individual. Um, there was nothing intimidating or um, or, or grand about her. And I think for that reason, she became very easily accepted in a way that many people had predicted that she wouldn't. And I don't think we could, have ha we could now have a better queen consul. It's as simple as that. And, and clearly, Charles does appear to be a far more settled person since he married her. And on King Charles III... I mean, I was, Simon, particularly pleased in his King's speech to see that he talked about the charities and the issues that he'd cared about so much that that work would have to pass to somebody else. Now, in the past, I had been quite critical um, of the King in his former life for some of his political, um, as I saw it, interferences. He put down a marker there, didn't he, that he's not going to do those things. But do you think, given... He's a very emotional man. I mean, it was a very emotional speech. Uh, it was a very good speech. But he is a man that tends to wear his heart on his sleeve. Do you think he's going to be able? Is he going to have the self-discipline not to talk about those issues that he cares so very much about? I've got no doubt that he'll be a very, very good king. Uh, there's been a lot of actuality played of his interview with Prince Harry. Uh, I think seven or eight years ago, where Prince Harry asked him if he would be political uh, when he became king. And he said, I'm not that stupid. And he isn't that stupid. Uh, he has had an apprenticeship uh, of, well, 64 years ago, he was created Prince of Wales in 1958. And he's been very well aware since childhood that one day he's going to be king. And I never really saw anything unduly political in most of his statements. I think the only things that he talked about where he could be accused of being political uh, was uh, when he got onto environmental questions and matters of climate change. 